Good Wednesday morning, guys. My name is Jerry Miller, and welcome to Real Talk with Keith Smith. Thank you kindly for joining us. A glorious Wednesday in downtown Charlottesville, a show presented by Ross Mortgage. And just an A-plus guy, Scotty Moe, Scott Morris of Ross Mortgage. Today's show is dynamic and interactive. You, the viewer and listener, can ask questions with real estate professionals that love to entertain, enlighten, and educate. We would be remiss not to give Judah Wickower, our director, some props. Not only does he keep the audio and visual running smoothly and efficiently, well, sometimes he has to scramble and make sure the microphones stay on the microphone arms. After Captain Destructo gets out of the way. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> You've got video proof? It we, just fell down. I had nothing to do with let's it. Let's go to the three shot and let's welcome the national award winner, Keith Smith himself. Where? Keith. Let's yeah. go to the three shot and let's welcome Scott Morris, who is one of the top performers in his company, right. a national company, yeah, right. Ross yeah. Mortgage. Yes. And dude's looking sharp, dude. Is he not looking fresh? Let's give Scotty Mo some love over here. I, I, you can hide a lot with the pullover, man. It's nice. The North Face is a quarter zip a huge fan of the quarter zip i like the quarter zip because i can put it up well i think you'll respect this you can put it on without messing up your hair yeah is that what I you got a, I, got a whole, I got a whole process so th- this that no, actually goes on before coffee. there's anything done with let me know when oh, you so, get the real okay. estate okay got it. i want to ask you about that. all clothes go on before hair is done yeah yeah okay okay see one of the reasons i like the quarter zip if i happen Shoot, to do the hair before the clothes are on i can get it on no problem Yes. I can get it on, no problem. Um, Kevin Yancey, I'll be, deli- I'll be delivering a replacement to the studio today. I got a bourbon soaked package back from United States Post Office yesterday. Bourbon oh, soaked. Dang. Oh, that and a bourbon soaked package. He oh. says he's going to be dropping off bourbon to the studio oh. today. Right. That means it broke in transit. Uh, that, that means about half of it will be ready for Scott when he comes <laughs> next week. That's right. I'm just joking. We won't crack the bottle. Scott will oh, get no. it unopened, I promise. I got Jesse Rutherford coming on Friday night. Oh, okay. If it shows up today. Jesse's <laughs> gonna, I see stuff over there. You're, you're, there is you're stuff over there. We wouldn't crack your bottle. So we, uh, we everybody's got a yellow card. We've been drinking a lot of coffee this morning. Yes. Everybody's got a yellow card. If if uh, somebody needs to use the head or the bathroom, yellow card, please. Not only do up. we use the yellow card to go to the bathroom, the keys to the bathroom have the big spoon on it as well. No, So, you know, I'm not. just joking. It Remember from not. elementary school, the big spoon yeah, on the keys? Yeah, or the, or the eraser. The or eraser. Or yeah. Um, all right. Why don't we do this? We're going to have some fun, but we got to get to work um, as well. Scotty Moe, the show is yours. Let's start with the first sizzle reel. My friend, anywhere you want to go today? Um, I think if you are out there looking to buy, uh, pay attention to your trusted advisors. I think we're going to be in kind of a tumultuous place as far as rates go. Uh for the next few weeks, we're going to see some data that's going to come in that uh, the markets are going to like and they're not going to like. Uh, part of it's going to have to do with uh, the jobs report, which uh, today we had uh, UDP reporting uh, significantly below uh, expected, and the bond market's starting to react, but so is uh, the equities market and what that means is so bonds are moving in what is typically a positive direction for rates um but more which is down which is down well well which is actually up but yield down and uh we're seeing equi- the equities market not perform so well and uh part of that's going to be due to the message expected to be delivered by jerome powell and the fed which really needs to be the beatings will continue until morale improves. Um, because if he goes out and says anything other than uh, if they start talking about tapering or we're not going to continue to, to increase the, the prime rate, uh, we're not going to see good news when it comes to inflation. Well said. We'll get that content out today, J-Dubs, as it's very timely. Keith Smith shows yours. Note to self. Don't interrupt the guy that's doing the sizzle reel. I, mean, I wrote that endearing. down. It's endearing. I wrote it's that. endearing. Oh, oh. And, he, and it's a good thing Scott loves you over there. It's endearing. I did. Was I interrupted? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was you. Is this funnier. a repeat of when you were working for me? I, totally you know, didn't pay I, attention to me. I think that was a, a, a DL zing to Keith. Are, am I listening to what you're saying over here, Keith Smith? I think that's what it was over there. Can you tell the three of us, the four of us, enjoy each other's company? The band is back together. The band is back together, Keith. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking of the movie Three Amigos. Everybody <laughs> saw that back in 87. I, that's more in, in, in tune on it. The question is, is who's who in the, in the, in the, in the role? I'm, I'm definitely... Steve the, Martin, 
You're Steve Martin. I'm Steve Martin. Uh, sure. I, why don't I go Martin Short? I'll just go okay, Martin Short. Okay, I was going to go Martin Short. No, I, I don't know. I think he's more of a Martin Short. Well, you guys should stand back to back. I, I think and it's see a toss up. When he's wearing his Nikes, <laughs> I think he's a little bit taller than I am. So the high heel Nikes? The, yeah, that's, yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. why he wears yeah. the Nikes. Exactly. Okay. exactly. <laughs> Who is the third one in the Three Amigos? Oh, it's uh, Martin Short. Steve Martin. Steve Martin. It'll come to me. Hold on one second. I, I can do a quick little Google search. Um, oh, come on. See if you can get it before I do the Google search no, and come out no. with it? I can, I can see the face. I can't remember it. Oh. You want me to tell you? You yeah, want me to tell you? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Probably, I've... maybe the most talented, Chevy Chase. Oh, Chevy Chase. Yeah. Ooh, I don't oh, yeah. know. Chevy uh, Chase. Uh, now, now he wants, now yeah. he wants to be of Chevy Chase. he wants to be Chevy Chase. <laughs> of the three, I'd say Chevy was the coolest, right? Of course. Yeah, so there you the, go. Yeah, yeah. He was Chevy the biggest Chase. pimp of the three, right? Yes. Did you just say pimp? Yeah, pimp means cool guy. Oh. Does that mean cool guy in that it, context? It doesn't mean yeah. that in the neighborhood I grew up in. But that's I okay. mean, I just mean he was very uh, debonair and suave and a ladies' man. I mean, Chevy Chase and Caddyshack, does it get any any cooler than that? Uh, oh, yeah, or the, you know. The, <laughs> Are we going down that road? Uh, what should we call it? The Lan National Lampoons, like the entire oh, series. I love National Lampoons. Christmas Vacation, I'd probably OD on... I don't know, 15, 20 times in the month of December alone. So the uh, sizzle reel that I was not supposed to interrupt you on, that I said something, so I apologize for that. So you're still thinking the same track. You think in the end of the year we're going to be in this mid fours, upper upper fours? Uh, upper fours to low fives. Upper that's, fours, that's, low fives. Yeah, did I, I, think, I made up the mid fours somewhere? The, yeah, yeah. I yeah, did yeah. make People, that up? I, some, I, somebody... Every time that gets brought up, uh, it gets lower and lower. I'm like, I didn't say that. <laughs> uh, when you said this a couple of weeks ago, maybe it was last week when Pre was on the show, Pre literally jumped out of her seat. She's like, let's go. Fours for the uh, interest rate. Do you see her do that? Yeah. And, I, and I got nervous, actually. And you know, she's closing deals. She is. Did you see her post? Yeah. yeah. She's seven, making moves. Seven listings under contract. All under contract at the same time? Um, well, within like a course of a week, I think. Yeah. yeah. That's big time. No, like, I, I've got a stack of documents in front of me. I'm giving uh, Ned Galloway and I are giving a, a regional housing partnership presentation to Almar County Board of Supervisors today. And, you know, the consensus of all these data that I crunched yesterday, um, you know, just this, the inventory is not getting better, right? There's just nothing to buy in our region, uh, at least in Albemarle County, that, you know, is, is hitting that quote unquote affordability index so we're going to talk a little bit about that with the board of supervisors but i'm ex i'm excited and i'm excited about um can you do me a small favor can you tag michael guthrie yes michael me? guthrie would you like me to get uh supervisor galloway in the mix no Although no I but I, I just got a i just got a text from michael thanking me personally so if you could thank him you're getting some props right online, now from online, keith smith online please thank you thank him well why don't we do this we can get a, a sizzle for Keith in the mix. No. Keith Smith, co-owner, Yes Realty Partners. Yes, he is a realtor. Yes, he is a realtor. <laughs> Tell us about this national award you just won, my friend. It's funny you should say that. People ask me all the time, so what do you do for a living? Uh, I am a real estate agent. I mean, Go mom, figure. Your mom says that to you as well. My mom, well, my mom says that for very different reasons. We love you, Tina. Yeah, you know, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm I'm super flattered. Uh, it's the second year in a row. This year, um, I, I won in the Crusader category. So it was primarily wrapped around the land trust work that we have done. But it's really interesting. Um, so it, it's, I don't know who nominated me for this. Um, I called around a bunch of people because the article and the quote, uh, they must have took from the show because I have was not interviewed uh, from Risk Media for, for it. But... You know, there's a quote at the end of the little little write-up that they did really kind of talks about our why, why we do this. And it's really simple. Um, you know, our trips around the sun requires three basic things in life, right? Food, clothing, and shelter. We get to wake up every morning and help them with one of them. Um, and it, it is our why. It's our why that we wake up every morning uh, and do this. It's also, I know the why, why Scott, who's sitting to my right, gets up every morning to do what we do, is to help people, you know, move to be part of that shelter component of the three components of life. And I'm just flat out flattered, um, and I'm somewhat speechless, which those who know me well know that's pretty hard to come by. But I, I have no idea who nominated me. I had no idea who sent in the write-up. 
uh, but whoever did, thank you very much. And um, it's a flat on, it's a flat out honor uh, to be nominated amongst some pretty cool people. Again, a shout out to Michael Michael Guthrie um, because there's a bunch of Howard Hanna people that's part of this uh, newsmaker setup. I love it. Congratulations, Michael Guthrie. I believe you are watching, sir. Uh, we have a lot of respect for you here on the I Love Seville Network. Um, when you see Keith Smith around town, congratulate him on back-to-back -back national recognition, national accolades. Gin. Um, I drink gin. Just the, in case anybody... the man <laughs> certainly deserves it. We'll go back to Scotty Moe here. Um, Jerome Powell later today. Yo. Data, I can say it's a roller coaster ride um, so far with the data we're seeing. A lot of folks now expecting maybe a hawkish J. Powell later today. Time will tell. Stephanie Wells Road says, congratulations, Keith Thank Smith. You, Stephanie. Um, Thank how do you see markets responding, Scott Morris? So I think we're going to see uh, some pouring into the bond market. A lot of it's going to depend on uh, what actual jobs numbers look like on Friday. Uh, the ADP number is, is something that uh, people give a look but don't give credit to um, because they adjusted the way that they report. And uh, ADP also believes that part of the difference in the expected number versus the actual produced number has to do with the snowstorms in the Northeast and people not being able to work less less than actual economic effect, but they're no longer reporting in an, econo in an economist viewpoint. Uh, they really are more from a data standpoint. So take it for what it's worth. We're going to find out on Friday what that really means. Um, as far as hawkish and the Fed goes, uh, we're that, you know, again, uh, the beatings will continue until inflation <laughs> improves. Um, that's, that's where we need to, that's the message they're going to deliver. But is inflation improving, in your opinion? Uh, it's, going, it's improving, but the, the, the you know. The, the speed of improvement. The speed of improvement, and then uh, to, uh, does it stall? Do we they not, want it down to like 2%, right? Do they not get to 2%? Do they say get to 4% yeah. and then don't know how to fix it? You know, there's a lot of, you know, one, it got so high so fast because we printed a third of the money that's ever been in circulation in the history of our country in uh, 12 months. And now, you know, now we're, you know, facing those repercussions. But, uh, you know, we'll find out. You know, there, that I don't know the answer to. I do know that we're going to, we will see a continued in decline, which will be a boon for mortgage rates as we progress through the year. How far we get with it is, you know, to be decided. There you go. That's the end of the second one. <clears throat> People giving you props. Carol Thorpe. Thank you, Carol. Says, Thank congratulations, you. Keith Smith. Stephanie Wells Rhodes, congratulations, Keith Smith. Thank Kevin you. Yancey. Grayson, congratulations, Keith Smith. Thank Spencer, you. congratulations, Thank Keith Smith. Um, Lou Stevens, congratulations, Keith Smith. Give the man some props. A national award winner announced today, ladies and gentlemen. So, thank you, everybody. I, I'm, I'm, I'm flattered. You know, I just the fact that I get to sit here and do this three times a week and really help people uh, achieve their real estate goals. And there's, you know, this important thing called shelter in our lives. I'm, I'm, I'm just happy that I'm, I have the ability to do it. For those who do not speak acronyms, can we explain what ADP means? Uh, they're a payroll. They're like uh, paychecks. They're like a payroll report. They're a company that uh, uh, got it. That does payroll for massive corporations across the United States, and they report jobless data based upon uh, those those reports, those companies, those clients. Automatic data processing. He's exactly right. ADP right there. Um, you can say the market leader, um, and when when they release data and numbers, people listen and they listen. It's kind of like it's kind of like E.F. Hutton. Now I just really dated myself. Um, so hey, if, if Michael Guthrie's still watching, in his opinion, if interest rates go to what did we settle on? Say five percent. Mm -hmm. Go to five percent. Is that good for the market or bad for the market? I'd love his read on it. He's uh, been around the block enough to know uh, to chime in on that. So, what if we go to if we go to five percent? Does that help inventory? Help hurt inventory? Do we end up exactly back where we were 12, 24 months ago? On that end of it, I have my opinion. I'd love to read. And any other real estate agent or real estate professional that's on the feed right now, or anybody, do, does it look? Does that scare you or 
or make you excited? Um, we'll see if we get a response from, from Merg. It's the name that his um, grandkids yeah. call him, Michael Guthrie, yeah. all-around great guy, yeah. golfer, community steward, ringer of the belt, the Salvation Army. And cool multi dude. multiple other things. Yeah. All done. A plus guy. So, Keith Smith, where do you want to go here? Um, we still have a major inventory problem, gentlemen. Yeah. Correct. And I think that uh, everyone cheering for low rates um, has to be aware that depending on how quickly we get there, that's uh, going to continue to make the inventory problem worse. Um, now, certainly in the long term, it will make it better, um, but we're, you know, there, there will be some growing pains. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm look, you know, as I keep a track on, and most folks in in my space do. Uh, I'm looking at the car footprint. Seven days back, 49 homes came on the market. 89 went pending. You know that that ratio is just not changing. As long as it, as long as we've got a substantial, substantially more homes going pending as as coming into active. You know, at this 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 difficulty is isn't going to get better and i'm and i'm about ready to talk to albemarle county uh, today because they're going to release their developer incentive programs which took two years to get done by the Neil way williamson has said multiple times that that developer incentive program is not impactful enough to move the needle you and, agree or disagree uh I don't disagree. I haven't read it in great depth on it. I'm going to actually sit through the presentation today. I'll probably sit next to Neil and uh, he'll look at his paper. Look at his paper. <laughs> <laughs> look at his test. <laughs> There's a lot of truth in that. Okay. What are you doing over there? He's going to say that. Okay, okay. The answer is C. <laughs> C. C. No, no, that's a D. 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 <laughs> They have uh, Neil Wright better. Johnny Ornalis giving you some props. Thank Congratulations, you, Keith thank Smith. You, thank you, Johnny. El Maestro de Real Estate, Keith Smith. That means you're just a... The maestro, the maestro of real estate. There you go. Did I translate that correctly? You did. Very well there done, Keith Smith. Very well done. The maestro of real estate. <laughs> That's it. Hold on a second. I need my... I need my your my, magic wand. My maestro wands to go ahead and do that. magic wand. Julie Huff Garrett, welcome to the program. Julie, hello, Miss. How are you? She's giving everybody some props. Uh, I see one, two, I, I count eight agents right now in the feed. Let there us know, go. agents with questions. Jump in, nine, excuse me, and we will uh, relay your questions or answers or perspective live on air. This one for, go ahead, Keith. Well, I'm just saying, those nine agents, and, and, and even Johnny, Johnny's really dialed into the, into the business and real estate. You know, if we... It will lower interest rates help the inventory or hurt it? I would really love to hear what these nine agents or anybody who's watching to go ahead and do that. What do you think about that, Neil Williams? Everybody, what do you think about that, James Watson? Everybody on – we've – our opinion or my opinion or everybody's opinion on set uh, is pretty solid. I think we've been consistent about it. I'd love exactly. to hear what others have to say and, and maybe prove us wrong a little bit. I mean, you would think – you guys are the experts. You lower the interest rates. You get a lot more buyers jumping into the buy-in buy -in market. When inventory is pinched already, that could lead back to a multiple offer situation, a little craziness and chaos, and prices increasing as a result. That's the layman's perspective. You guys are the experts. Yeah. I'm, I'm, again, I've got all kinds of data in front of me, and it's just not looking bad. As far as inventory, is not looking good. And... Uh, you know, at some point, you know, you know, trying to take the positive end of it, maybe for sake of a talk show. Do you think, Scott, if we do get to this five, or it kind of flush, it, it flirts a little bit below five, is it going to change folks who've been sitting on the sidelines to put their houses on the market? Do you see that possibly happening? Yeah, well, that's what I talk when, when I'm talking about a timeline. Um, I think we go through a, an initial phase where we put more buyers on the board, multiple offers, things are painful. If rates continue to tick low, you get more people who are willing to step away from uh, the rates that they have and use the uh, massive amounts of equity that they they have accrued and are accruing in that process in order to move move up into something else because that's the next step you know how long have the people been in these homes we're only talking two or three years for a lot of these this massive volume of purchases um you know you get a you know you go buy a new car it's an only a new car for a little amount of time before you you know people 
have a driven want for for something else. If they are in a townhome, they want to move up to something else. Um, and then you've got the other cycle of life of you know people people divorcing and need to unload a property or you know all of these things downsizing all or of these upsizing. things or yeah all of these things happen and they're going to continue to create energy and but people want to make those decisions without a sense of fear so if if the market improves the initial improvement will put more people on the board take up the inventory that we have available until there's enough until there's enough consistency that it removes some of that fear from moving forward. One thing we can say with confidence and conviction, if the rates drop, as we're predicting they're going to drop, that's going to be good news for people choosing to list homes. The Carol Thorpes of the world, if the rates drop, more people jump in the mix, more interest in her property in Mill Creek. It, it, yes, in theory, but let me ask you a question, Scott. Has the band-aid been ripped off at the current rates? Are, are people coming into you talking about getting a loan freaking out about rates, or are they more freaking out about or more concerned about what am I going to buy? What's the what, conversation? What am I going to buy is the conversation. Yeah, um, but a couple of months ago it was the opposite, yeah, right? Yeah, 100%. And, so, and some of the people who came in a couple months ago, so we, you know, we've pulled back a little bit from those highs, um, are now coming in and saying, you know, I want... I don't like where I am. What do I need? You know, what can we do to find something? What can I qualify? What are, are there strategies that you have? Can you tell me what this two one buy down is all about? Like, what do we need to do in order to take the next step? And what's the most effective way to do so? Colby Ramasco giving Scotty Moe some props. Colby, what's up, my man? The Col fabulous Tova Payne watching the program as we speak. What up, Tova? Got to get her back on for a second rodeo. I know, I know. Don't be shy, Tova. You did a great job last time, I'm sure Tova. she's super excited about this being talked about right now. Yeah. Super I mean, so excited about it? Yeah. <laughs> I think that was tongue-in-cheek over there. Right now, she's somewhere back I at speak Ross sarcasm. Mortgage headquarters. She's like, you guys. I speak yeah. sarcasm. I know we do. <laughs> I know it. you do. Fluently. I, I, I very, very fluently. You know, I've hung around enough of those folks there on that. So, look, I'm just looking at this 86 that went pending. And by the way, just to put a little caveat on it, I actually added in this week the Augusta because I want to start into that actives and pendings. I want to start That's kind of idea. tracking what's going on the other side. So, so some of these numbers we're talking about are a little bit different than a year ago because a year ago I did not have Augusta in there, but I'm, I'm starting to, to throw uh, Augusta in it and Waynesboro. But look, so this is now the car footprint to include the other side of the hill. We've got 89 in the last seven days that went pending. Uh, the median days on market, that's something I prefer to watch. Some folks look at a different set of numbers, but I like DOMs. Uh, the, the medium is 19. The average is 44, right? Um, so, you know, and I'm looking at the DOMs in here, and there's like 20 with triple digits days on markets. Quite a bit of, we start hitting about the... Uh, we hit the 50th transaction of the 80 that are going into the 30 days and up kind of on market. I think when we have these conversations one or two weeks, from, I've said this last week, um, uh, we're going to start seeing all these triple-digit days on markets fading away because they're just getting put on the contract. And we're going to start seeing the average days on market and the median start getting a lot closer. What do, you what do you think, Scott? I agree with that. Um, I also think that part of the uh, what we're what we're gonna what's what's keeping these triple digit or days on market is just people who had bad you know bad expectations and weren't either open to guidance from uh, a trusted professional uh, or they or, came out of the gate wrong. Yeah, or or they uh, yeah or they got bad advice and uh, as you know so. Buyers typically can learn in the course of a few weeks what the market is like um, and take some, take some lumps, take some lessons and realize, okay, this is what I need to do in order to succeed. Whereas a seller who, you know, m isn't motivated but thinks they're going to get it all might, you know, wait, have 180 days of uh, something sitting on the market with no offers to go, huh, I wonder why I'm not, so, I wonder why I'm not selling this house. So. That's a good take right there. <clears throat> It's much easier to learn on the fly 
if you're a buyer than if you're a seller. Yeah. If you're a seller and you're learning on the fly here, it's your actual house that you're living in. And the longer it goes that it's on the market, potentially more stress, more traffic, more conversation at the dinner table with the significant other or the trusted advisor. It depends on why you're selling, too, what your motivation is. So um, if, it's, if it's a spat between three siblings who are selling uh, mom and dad's house, um, you know, those are, you know, and one of them thinks that they can get all the money from two years ago, they, you know, they're, you're not. Or, um, but, you know, if rates continue to drop, Potentially, maybe that exists. So, you know, it's, it's really a matter of, one, finding the right person to list your house, trusting their advice, and taking effective action to, to make it sold. Scotty Bowe's on point today. What do you think, Keith? Yeah, motivation. We haven't talked about that in a long time. But, you know, look, motivation on the buyer and the seller is almost as important as the deal itself, right? You have to have a motivated seller and a motivated buyer. If you have both of them, meaning they wish to actually uh, get to the closing table, um, you'll make a deal happen, right? My, my yeah. Smile, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? No, mo- you know, motive and intent. What do you know? <laughs> you know I want to sell my house. Um, well, but, I'm dealing with yeah. one right now where I've got, and I, I got to leave specifics out of it, that there's a divorce amongst twins. Ooh. Okay. Wait, how does that work? Yeah, it's not an actual divorce. I'm using the word as a divorce, but there's twins that inherited a house. Uh, oh, and they got beef. And one is suing the other. Okay. And it's yeah. a judge appointed. The twins are married? Well, it's... That's worrisome. <laughs> we got a major, bigger problem there. This guy was going to say something. He thought twice about saying it, I could tell. I think I might know who this is. That's why I'm... Let me, let, me, let, me, let me get a redo on this. I'm helping out a couple of attorneys solve a problem where there's twins that one is suing the other oh, okay. and get it done. So there's, yeah. there's a lack of... There's a lack of motivation just on the listing side too. As soon as you said that, along with yeah, 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 I, I, anyway, Scott knows I, who it is. I think I know who this is. Yeah, you knows you know is. exactly who this is. Um, but in any event, you know, look, this is why, and and you know why, I've been saying this for years. Real estate is it takes sixty six things. I've been talking about it forever, right? Um, it's these six things. You've got to be in the right location. You've got to have a price. Price matters. Right, it matters more now than ever because if it's been on the market for a while, it gets to Jerry's point a scar- scarlet letter. People start not looking at it. It has to have the right features. It's got to be in the right condition. To your point, Scott, timing right is is everything. And you know, to be frank, who's on the other side matters. Who's part of the transaction matters to get get you to the end. And it's those six things. And as those things start either going up and down and changing, is how deals um, happen. It, and it's again, it doesn't take a national award to figure that out. <laughs> you know, it's pretty pretty uh, pretty self explanatory. But you have one on your resume, Kevin I have Yancey. Two, two actually. On two on He's two on back to back. Back to back. I stand corrected. Back to back. Um, gentlemen, love you, to know who submitted it. Though. Do you foresee Airbnb investors possibly influencing inventory with flips or getting out of the temporary housing with all the competition in the space? It's something that I honestly do not understand. Like, I can't wrap my brain around who is paying $750 a night uh, for some of what these what they get like it's awesome that they get it that's amazing i congratulate everyone who does it do i think that it's got a runway and maybe they're at the end of it I, dude i don't know i tried to you know i was going to go to snowshoe this past weekend um and with lot, the fam or solo uh with the fam okay. so thursday to sunday uh snowshoe's with the, great with the with the fam now all of the 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 bookings like uh, top of the mountain, little town area were already taken, so I started looking at Airbnbs um, and all of my options, and it was going to be five grand for four nights. Jeez. And I was like, You're "Like I don't love you that much." I, I, I just <laughs> conceivably couldn't. I mean, I don't like. I don't like. I don't get it. Like, who? I mean, so they're getting it. Somebody's going out there and, and doing that, and you know, I, I just like. I can't wrap my brain around. Like, so, I, want, I don't even like getting cold. So, so, so that's for me, of, that was like, boom. Well, looks that like kind of we're brings me back to this else. inflation conversation we had earlier, right? You know, we, 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 we're very blessed. We get to do a lot of traveling to his, <laughs> to my, you know. Chagrin. Chagrin, thank you. To his chagrin. But we, we're very blessed. We get to a little traveling. We travel yeah. more than any people I know. 
just cut to the chase. Yeah, well, we're yeah. blessed. We're, yeah. we're, we're, we also work when we travel, so, you know, we're blessed that we can do what we do from laptops and, and, and <laughs> the tail is going nuts If you can hear it, I'm not sure if the viewers and listeners can. That's Liza's tail. <laughs> Much like a metronome on crack over there, but Liza's tail is letting us know she's alive. I don't know if I'm getting compliment or, or the shut up but on that. to my point on the, the cost, I, I talked to somebody this morning. He's like, yes, I, he, I saw the same thing. I'm flying to Montreal, lodging, plane tickets, and uh, yeah. uh, lift tickets, the whole, the whole shebang, $2,800. That's fantastic. For, and, and versus... I, I, Five grand to go stay in West Virginia for and, four and nights. What do you attribute that to? I, I, dude, I, 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 I just uh, maybe. I mean, maybe. snowshoe's nice, but it's not skiing in Montreal, right? Well, I, I've, I've been to Montreal. I'm telling you, it's not the same thing. Well, you're saying Montreal is better than? Oh snow? my god! Well, yeah, yeah, that's what we're yeah, saying. Yeah, they've got more yeah. slopes. Yeah, the whole yeah, not even much, in the same category. Nicer. So, I mean, to snowshoes credit. Plus, you got a little French thrown in there. To which snowshoes credit, it's one of the best resorts on the East Coast. What other? I think that's fair to say. Um, but can, does it compare to the Rockies? Does it compare to Montreal? No, it doesn't. So the question is, would you pack up the kids in a plane and all that stuff for half the price and go to Montreal? I'm not, I'm not getting on a plane with my, no, <laughs> I'm not taking those people anywhere that I can't like put them in a car for. <laughs> no. He's got little kids. I know. I, is it three <laughs> under six or three under five? Uh, three under five. Three under five. He's gosh, man. Yeah. I feel like we have it hard enough with two under, under five. He's got three under five. Yeah, so all you got to do is wind them up, put them in the, in, the, in the travel way there on the plane, and then let people worry about them. It's a good luck, and let them run up and down. Yeah. It's, it's not a big deal. It <laughs> happens all the time. Yeah, so, but, but the point I was trying to get to is, you know, we've got this inflation. We're supposedly in a recession, or, or wherever we are, but Yon is flying out to go visit grandbaby number three, Ravenna, the first week of February to help out to be super grandmother, super Gigi mom, and help out. And their their place that they have is super tiny, and there's no place to stay. I can't find an Airbnb around their apartment where they where they live in there. I, I mean, I can't find one. Never. So where are they staying? Where's she staying? Uh, we're we're either fluctuating dates based around Airbnb and flights, and it's just it's becoming a thing, right? And I mean, she can go to downtown Seattle, which they're, that's a 15, 20 minute drive. They're north of Seattle. But, you know, I can't find them at an Airbnb to, to stay at. So where is all this money coming from? Where is all these people moving to, moving around? Uh, are, we, are we putting them all on credit cards or we're doing cash or, you know, I just, I don't. Well, that's something that, that, that data supports, which is uh, we're seeing a, a big uptick nationally credit in, in credit card debt. All time high for America. A, and yeah. a lowered amount of savings. So, and it's the reason I tossed it in out. In situations like that, um, while not ideal, uh, I've got a product that allows people to get in at zero zero money down um and if we can get some concessions from the seller while while that still exists for some properties um you could essentially walk in and buy a house as not a veteran um making up to one hundred and seventy two thousand dollars a year uh individually depending on uh where in the state you are and uh buy a house get so, in a home so how is so we we're the nation nationwide credit card debt's going up American history high. How is that impacting your loan process? I mean, it depends on uh, the, the borrower. Um, depends on what things look like. Um, you know, it uh, not significantly different than any other time. Um, I'm getting. Uh, we're putting together approvals. We're, we're having a difficult time finding uh, inventory to, to get people under contract with. So, so back to the beginning conversation. People, you know, look. I, I personally think too much credit card debt's not a good thing, right? We, Yon and I, always try to stay on the low side. Low side of that, we pay it off every month on whatever credit cards we have. Or otherwise, we just don't use it. But the reality of the reality of it is the conversation you're having with folks, and the same thing with us, and maybe some of the other real estate agents can chime in. This whole conversation of the interest rate has kind of gone away, and it's like, where can I buy a home? So doesn't that sound a lot like it was a year ago? Right? It was that was a year ago we were talking. Eerie, eerily similar. And 
and not that we necessarily called it. I actually went back and looked at some shows at the end of end of last year, middle of last year, where I where I was predicting interest. Excuse me, predicting uh, inventory would grow, but it's staying flat. I'm looking week over weeks, and we're just not getting. We're not growing in inventory, at least in this region, and uh, the pendings are creeping up higher than they were this time last year. So where do you think we go? What happens? You know, I think we sit here, or I think we're going to be having this conversation almost every show for quite a while. Um, we're going to, uh, you know, on Monday start bringing in more real estate agents so they can talk about live what their experiences are uh, in the market. But I think we just need to start educating. And, you know, the conversation I'm going to have with Albemarle County is my constant one I have here about the buyer pool is the 20 foot deep of the Olympic size, 10 meter tall diving thing. The inventory is the kiddie pool. And, you know, everybody's got to help out. And, and to Neil Williamson's, um, you know, more, what, what is his hashtag? More, more housing everywhere. More for housing everywhere, everywhere for everyone. You know, we've got to figure out how to turn that spigot on, so we can increase increase residential uh, construction. Is frankly. the political capital there for that, Keith Smith? I'm going to find out today at Almar County at one o'clock. Why is the incentive um, the incentives they're trying to push through such lacking in incentives? I, I wish I knew the answer to that. I'm going to find out. Uh, that will we'll, we'll pour it in on. Friday on that when when Jesse's sitting here at the table, Jesse Rutherford from Nelson County. We're going to talk a little bit uh, Nelson County and budget processes and some of the next uh, uh, month or so with um, elected officials, local elected officials. But uh, I don't have the answer to that. You know, again, I'm going to find out. You know, maybe there's some incentives that haven't leaked out yet. Don't know, but. Uh, what I've seen isn't much of an incentive, to be honest with you. How are the builders responding, fellas? Bill McChesney, welcome to the program, the mayor of McIntyre. To, you know, to be frank, I don't think they even care and look at it. I don't think, I think they realize it's not going to be substantial enough even to pay attention to. And that's a bit sarcastic and a bit pessimistic. Also but I, concerning. I, I also think I hit it the nail on the head. How I, are your uh, builders that you're working alongside... What's their pulse, their temperature, Scotty Mo? I think the biggest, well, the... You got a couple watching right the now. The smaller, mid-sized uh, builders that I have put the most time in with, uh, the biggest concern is finding uh, affordable land in order to uh, not, you know, they're going to go through the, the process is going to be what the process is, county to county. I think to Keith's point there, like, you know, they, they don't expect much of the government. Um, but uh, can... You know, can they find divisible or already divided lots that they can put a house on market that is, you know, in in the range of where what they're building that uh, uh, they can turn around and sell and uh, get enough attention to that they're not pricing themselves out of what they're doing. So the math is always density driven. That's the multiplier. That's what everybody needs to do because if you're paying in Albemarle County, you're going to be pr pay premium for land. You know that's just what's going to happen. Your development expenses are going to be very expensive. Your rezoning processes and all that's going to be expensive and long. So whatever the incentives are, they have to increase density. If they don't increase density, I've been talking about this pear-shaped market for quite a while in our area, right? It's, it's going to be a little closer to Charlottesville and Albemarle County, and it's going to poke up at the top of the pair up to the other side of the mountain. It's the reason why I'm starting to include Augusta and Waynesboro in my weekly analysis on that, on that end of it. And so what the developers are going to do, the big developers are going to do, because some of these folks I am having conversations with, they're trying to find something that's inside that pair but just close enough to the edge of the shape of the of, of the bottom of the pair that are close enough to Albemarle, but maybe not in Albemarle, so that the land is a little bit cheaper, the development process is a little bit easier. Green County would be an example of that, and it and that's that's where that's where the money's going to go, unless these incentives, and they they figure out how to turn red tape into green tape, and reduce the time. That's where it's going they're going to go. It's just. There'll be a few projects in Albemarle County, uh, but not enough 
to make a difference or make an impact. Comments coming in right now. This one from Crozet from a family that is currently renting. Kevin Coppinger, the game is rigged. Last year, rates were low. We could not buy. This year, rates are high, and we still cannot buy. Yeah. It's a very frustrating scenario. Both my wife and I have jobs. We make above the area median income. We'd like to stay in Crozet to keep our kids in the schools they're in. The game is rigged. Who wants to touch that one? Take the time. Uh, send me a message. Uh, let's get an application. Let's see if we can come up with a solution. So there's, there's options on the table. Uh, uh, the game is rigged. I think uh, uh, I, I understand the frustration. I deal with this every day with folks. Uh, but to Scott's point, you know, you know, first you got to figure out what you can qualify for. And Scott's got some great programs that might be able to help you out a little bit on that. We're still doing two one buy downs, right? Yeah. So two one buy downs would be would be one. But you know, I, you're 100 percent right. Um, I'm looking at what's available in Albemarle County, active right now. And you know what? It's going to have an eight in front of it. Well, and, and Mr. Coppinger, I appreciate the comment and your transparency and authenticity with your comment. Offering a little perspective here, the Crozet market is about as expensive as it gets in, in Almar County. And it's because of those schools that you obviously know and cherish that your kids are in. Well, back back to location. So we've got the look because that works, you know, on the buy side and the sell side, right? The six things. We've got the location. The price is what we've got to figure out. And Scott can help with that, right? What, you know, there's, there's what you can afford and what you're comfortable with, right? What are we talking? Old trails? Starts with an eight? That's what I was about to say. Yeah. There's, there's stuff out there that's not old trail. Like, uh, you know, yeah. there's you might, gray rock. Well, yeah, gray so, rock's below that. But the next price point wise, I mean, the next two is important, right? What features are, are they looking for? And are they willing to buy something that might need a little bit of help, right? So that's where the, that's where, if we know the location and we know what we can afford or what we want to spend, then we're starting to look at features and conditions. And if we want to hit all four of them, you're more than, not more than likely, I know you're competing against other folks. Back to my comment earlier, this is 100% right. Interest rates are higher than they were a year ago. Inventory is still tight. Inventory has not loosened up. It is not going to loosen up anytime soon. As we started the show earlier, even if it goes down to 5%, it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse on that end. Of I it. ask this question a lot to you guys, the experts. Is it more difficult now for the first time home buyer like the Coppinger family to buy a house, or is it more difficult for the Coppinger family to have, have purchased a home? A year, 18 months ago. 18 months ago. You still say 18 months? Yeah. I think it's, it's easier now. And, uh, you, know, I, I, you know, we're back to getting, you know, concessions. We're putting deals together. Um, you know, I, it was harder 18 months ago than it is right now. Yeah. 18 months ago, there was no rules. It was the Wild West. There was no normalcy. Now there is some normalcy back. But I am starting, this, as Scott's mentioned, we're starting to see you know, waiving of home inspections again. Uh, That's back? We're starting to see waivings of septic inspections if it's out in the county on the end of it. So, and if the, uh, back to my six things, if we hit the first four, if it's in the right location, right price, right features, right condition, instead of bidding against 30 people, you're bidding against three three, four, or five, but you're still bidding against other people. There's still multiple offers And that, that goes back in. to it being the right property. Um, although I will say that, uh, <laughs> you know, it, so I had an agent tell me a story the other day uh, of something that happened this past weekend. Uh, went out, saw, uh, contacted the listing agent at 12, um, kind of get an idea of what they might be um, interested in, very interested buyers. Uh, buyers uh, saw the property at 1 p.m. Uh, at 2.45, contacted to make a co cash offer, no contingencies, two-week close, and uh, he said, we already accepted an offer. He's like, well, was it at this number? No, no, it wasn't that high. I'm literally offering you a better offer than what you have in hand and you're not going to present it to your clients and uh say that again slowly they they the 
the seller had said he had they had verbally accepted something, and they wouldn't even entertain the. the Was it better, listed? Yeah. Really. The better offer. That's. Interesting. Like, no, we're yeah, I, I, we, is that a relationship? We're going to talk about that one off air a little bit. Relationship that, yeah. that in place with the buyer and the seller? I don't know. I'm not going to get deeper. Yeah, into yeah, that. yeah. That, that, that's we're going to talk about that off air. Something's not right about I that. I don't and, disagree on that. And are not, all price not, points? Well, you know, we don't want to flush this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, because I would imagine you're going to allude to fiduciary responsibility with representation and presenting all offers. That's mm. an off-air conversation. Um, are all price points it's gentlemen? It's a thing called clear cooperation. Yeah, right. So. Are all gentlemen? Are all are all price price points gentlemen on fire right now? This we're talking. I was talking about in the seven hundred thousand dollar range, um, and yeah. certainly the you know. Three hundred or thereabouts is as tough as it's ever been. Um, I've seen a lot of stuff in Eastern Almaro County in the Keswick area. Nine hundred to a million three, million four, moving, moving, moving quickly. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, you know, if we this conversation in November and December, the entry, the if you can find something below three hundred thousand, right? That those were sitting on the market. A little bit longer right they were a little bit more difficult i think the the band-aid just getting ripped off doubling and in interest rates was was hurting the first time home buyer or i think those properties were sitting because you had people who were previously qualified at 400 x who are now being shown these three hundred thousand dollar properties that are not what you know, there's deferred maintenance. It's just, you know, this is not a new house. This is something built in the 1970s or early 80s that just doesn't check all the boxes. And everybody did for. a timeout. So they put, they, they went on pause. But, you know, if, That's to, to that point, uh, this is where things like, uh, you know, let's, how creative can we be? You know, could we go do a limited 203K where we, yeah. uh, you know, could go in and about. make some improvements on the property and make it kind of what you want to make it and you could live in there to do that? You know, do we have the right, the people in place to execute something like that? Um, that's that's where having a, a team of people who can get you what you want within reason becomes a, what this is all so about. So back to the first time home buyer, I have a client who's a doctor moving not my son-in-law and daughter but another doctor who's moving into richmond uh, making well above area medium income and we are we are we're not struggling but we're just like every weekend we're out looking and we're looking and we're looking and we're making offers and we're in the game and we're doing this because he's moved this particular family much like my um yvonne and houston who Scott's helping, thank you very much. Oh, nice. Um, Love it. Uh, is, uh, you know, moving, they're moving for out west also, and uh, we need to find them a home. Husband. They're moving from out west to Richmond? Yeah. No, 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 no. My, this, this other doctor gotcha. that I'm helping is moving out west to Charlottesville. Um, and we're having the same struggle, right? We're, you know, trying to find it. Back to the Crozet, um, there's a lot of great agents watching, but I happen to be next week out in crochet in a bunch of meetings i'd love to buy them a cup of coffee and see if i can help them out any way i can there you go um this comment's come in um how about the taxes gentlemen from the mayor of mcintyre uh we had in the city of charlottesville and he's retired he and his wife are retired he said we've had a 25 percent increase on our real estate taxes in the last two years in the city of charlottesville we are on a fixed income he says this cannot be helping people afford to buy homes and he says also and he said in the past Heck, from a retired standpoint, this is making it difficult for us. 25% uptick in taxes on their house, and they're on a fixed income. That's a substantial uptick. I'm you empathize. Gonna, you yeah, empathize. Yeah, I empathize. And, you know, and, and, you know I, I cannot say enough about the government wanting more of your money. So Scott let's talk about let's talk Scott about Scott and I share uh, similar ideologies. So so let's talk about how we can help, right? Um, the problem is the tax relief program, and you've identified well, that's this. That's actually think, where our chemistry is not working today. Well, that's not where I was going to go. Well, you mentioned this was it Monday? Like if you own the house and you have substantial equity in it, you're probably priced out of the tax relief programs. You are. So the tax relief programs definitively need a lot of work. A lot of work. A lot of work, right? And, you know, unless you're a 100% disabled vet, 
um, uh, which is extremely difficult to get, as Scott and I know. Um, it, but what I was going to talk about, it's funny that this came up. I was on the phone with two clients this morning on the way in that we helped sell houses two years ago, three years ago. Like, you know, what the what? What the heck's going on? So I've actually got meetings with them, and we're going to do, because uh, there's time to appeal in Albemarle County. I don't know when the appeal deadline is for the city off the top of my head. Um, Another question I have for you, why is that window so narrow? Is that strategic? I, I don't With know. With the hope that folks miss the appeal window? Well, we're going to bring Woody Fincham back in, and, and, and he can probably help us out. But the window, the window actually in Albemarle County is much wider than, than it was city. in... city. Well, in Flavana, was less than 30 days on that end of it. So we kind of go through this every year, this time of the year. I get phone calls. So these particular clients I'm going to meet, we're going to do a marketing. Because they're required by law, they can't exceed market value. So if you provide them the data, hey, this is market value, and let's assume market value is $100,000 or whatever it is below the, what the tax is set, what they're telling you it is, um, then we'll give you the data for that, and you submit it to the to the county or the city, and, and hopefully they'll adjust your tax. I, I, they did it with my house. They did it, they did it there's a, 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 a mutual friend of ours that lives at the Acres that used to work at Pulvana County High School. You know who I'm talking about. Um, uh, I got them. They were $150,000 over market mm. value. Okay. Yeah, I didn't hear that much. And um, we, we, we proved the numbers, and they adjusted their tax value, $150,000 over market value. So we got to look at it and find out. So reach out to me, and I'll be more than happy to, to do an assessment and provide you with a CMA, and hopefully it's below what they're saying, and then you submit it, if that makes any sense. Um, Bill confirms that he is 100%. Um, out of the tax relief program. I would imagine, yeah. Bill, that is because of the equity in your house, sir. Yeah. Um, has that come up? Multiple people are asking on the feed with conversations with buyers and sellers, taxes and pricing them out of certain inventory, no? I, I, no. Don't, I don't see taxes. Uh, HOA fees, for some reason, will, will come into a conversation. Because some, particularly on the condo side of the house, condo fees are always going to be significantly more. Now they cover, they you know supposedly cover more, and but it also creates for a much lower uh, home insurance premium as well. Yeah, so Lake Monticello is like ninety bucks a, a month, right? But when you look at some of these condos, they're three, four, five hundred bucks. They could be substantial uh, a month, and so those are generally the conversation. There's very little, very little conversation about tax. Uh, tax Bill dollars. says either. Charlottesville or Albemarle County has a 30-day window for tax yeah. relief appeal. They do. And it only, um, you can only do this appeal during working hours. So if you have a job, it makes it extremely difficult. So I thought, I, I have to double check because this was a conversation I had this morning and Bill, if you don't mind fact checking, checking me, uh, I think Albemarle County, you actually could do it online. You can actually do the reassessment appeal Tax relief may be a little different, uh, but the reassessment, I believe you can submit online. That was the conversation I had this morning. I may be wrong, but... Mr. Yancey says, we did what you're talking about in Fluvanna County. They denied it for us, and then the for sale sign went in the yard that afternoon, and his wife was in real estate at the time. Yeah. Uh, we've been very fortunate. Uh, everybody that we, we helped uh, over a dozen, almost two dozen people, excuse me, in Fluvanna County, and everybody we helped got, got reduced. We just provided the data. And is that a pro bono service, folks? Oh, yeah. Asking? Yeah, yeah. For sure. Absolutely. I help okay. any way I can. Okay. Then if that doesn't work, I call my Uncle Vito from Staten Island. Then we get it fixed. Man, Uncle Vito <laughs> from Staten Island has a lot of influence in Fluvanna County. I, I need an Uncle Vito in my life, Keith Smith. I think we you should be calling Uncle Vito, Vito on the government yeah. all the time. You do not want to <laughs> ask for a favor from Uncle Vito. Trust me. I can't imagine what the payback is. For uh, Uncle Vito. And I do not have an Uncle Vito in Staten Island. <laughs> Multiple people are I had a grandfather props. who was in the construction business that brand, drove a brand new caddy every year, but that's a different story. Diane Miller, Jerry Russell, uh, Maggie Gunnels, all giving you props on the thank award. Thank you, thank you, thank you. They're uh, wonderful that people. That makes you feel good, does it not? You know, um, you know, this is an industry award. You know, it's, it's, it's 
I'm nominated blind, so this isn't one of these, you know, you pay to play kind of thing. So, um, and I'd love to know who did the write-up because I was not interviewed, and the only thing is, is maybe they watched the show and they peeled it from the show uh, one time. But Br Brian Smith for Scott has the refinance business picked up for oh, you, Scott. Yeah. Um, so the people that we're we're refinancing. Um, are we're solving some cash flow problems for whether it be uh, credit card debt or vehicles, etc. Um, you know what can we do to go in and uh, save you three, four, six hundred dollars a month uh, based on what your current liabilities look like, um, and uh, can we make them? Does it does it make sense for you to do it? I like it. Um, Kevin offered, I mean, think about this hike here. He says, Yancey, um, 2007, $99,000 assessment in Fluvanna County. Mm. 2008, the assessment went to 213000 Yeah. So it more than 2 x Yeah. Was that 07 was the, the back yeah, 07, year? 07, 08. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that, that's that, ridiculous. That's intense. And that was. And that was at the time of a recession. That was the blow up. The, yeah, that was right before. It was and right that before. Was, and Fluvanna also had had some interesting stuff happen. They had like a private uh, company that had come out. They had, and they ended up redoing things two or three times. And Keith probably knows this better than Well, it, was, it made it worse. Does. It made it worse than that. They didn't reassess. And may have it. Kevin probably knows this. I'm trying to remember. I don't think they reassessed in 10 years. There was a, there was a period there for years that they didn't reassess. And then all of a sudden they reassessed. And, and, and if Neil is watching, he'll be able to answer this question. Um, that there's a statutory requirement to reassess. I know the comprehensive plan has to be done every five years, so I might be mixing it may be five years or 10 years, but there was an extended period of time where Fulvana County did not reassess, and then it was a, a and that may be the period uh, he's talking about. Um, questions keep them coming fast and furious. Gentlemen, this question's coming. Do the assessments happen every year to market value? So each, that's to my point, each jurisdiction does it a little bit differently, right? Uh, some jurisdictions don't do it every year. Some do it every couple of years. And there's a required amount of time that they must do it. And I can't remember. For Ten years sticks in my little... I'm pretty sure Amaro County does it every other year. Probably. Well, yeah. some jurisdictions split the county in half, right? I think that's what Amaro County does. Yeah, so they'll yeah. do one half one year, one half half the other year. I, I will tell you, our, our rental in Albemarle County went up over 25%. But I ran the numbers and it was pretty much pretty right. accurate. It was pretty. It was accurate. pretty market value. Yeah. Um, multiple people are confirming. Yes, you can do the documents online for the appeal. Yeah. Um, but FaceTime is required. Got it. FaceTime is required. Um, so you can submit it, but then you got to go there. That's right. Okay. And the tough time, the tough aspect of that is if you have a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, all that funny thing, you know. J-O-B. J-O-B. Um, the assessment company was in California, never set foot in the state, paid a pilot to fly a grid and did assessment from Google Earth. And who's this now? That's that was Yancey. what happened in the... In Fluvanna. In Fluvanna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's bananas. Well, Fluvanna never... So Albemarle County does it in-house. At least there's an... Especially at the time with like worse data tracking than that was like this this it was a biplane right yeah yeah that, that's this company's version of uh yeah. their their zillow price at the time yeah so like, they do that so the the one that did fulvana county for last year was also out of richmond but look to and and we discussed this with woody the viewers Fincher. and listeners are smart oh well, I doubt, yeah smarter smarter than this host anyway um they woody said um you know, the firms that can do these mass appraisals are, are, are pretty limited, right? That there's, that's what they do, these mass, mass appraisals on that. Um, Woody Fincham, I'm Fincham & Associates, one of the proud partners of Real Talk. Please go to online at realtalkwithjeepsmith.com, yeah. and you'll you. see the partner tab, the trusted advisors of the supply chain we call real estate. Questions, keep them coming in fast and furious, please. Please support them, because without that, we wouldn't be here having fun. Multiple comments on evictions, and if the expectation is evictions will pick up, and obviously the macro headline was Blackstone yeah. is getting uh, pretty heavy in the eviction game. Um, granted, that's a macro headline, and Blackstone, let's cut to the chase, does not own rental properties in Central Virginia. It does not. Still, the macro headlines drive chatter on social. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think... 
my suspicion is, and this is just total spitball, have no nothing to uh, to verify any of this. I think they're trying to get folks out of the house so they can put them on the market and flip them. Is what my suspicion is. I may be wrong on that. But Why you say that? Because they see the prices the houses are going for. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I just, I just think having mass single family detached units as rental in a large footprint business model just can't be sustainable it just doesn't make sense to me but i may I be wrong a, probably a combination of things one you get into some of these places and the reason that they need to evict is because if you go back through the pandemic let's just look at the past three years the people who were not paying were renters and some of these uh municipalities are much kinder to that to the the tenant than the landlord and they got themselves into a situation that they in some of these municipal now i think this really is going to be location dependent they got into situations as landlords in in some cities that maybe they just shouldn't have been in and now they're figuring you know it's like anything else they you know there's some trials and tribulations like to I, learn. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. They got, buyers thing. They got in yeah. and they realized, all right, we don't want to be here. And probably in some other areas, they do want to be there. So I, I bet it has, it's more nuanced than just we want to go get the, we want to turn around and flip these properties. So something that's hitting the news, not necessarily that, but more macro, I've been, you know, these layoffs continue at the tech the tech level, right? Um, I don't know what kind of impact that's having on it. If this is a lot to do with where they're where they're buying these units, and maybe there's some layoffs and some turnover doing due into that. But PayPal announced layoffs yesterday. Workday announced layoffs yesterday. You would be hard pressed not to find a technology company, especially those that are publicly traded, not laying people off, and but especially locally, those who utilize low rates to help invigorate the company. But locally, it's quite the opposite, right? Locally, we're hiring. Yeah. Yeah, Willow Tree is saying we're hiring. So I think I think there's a... And, and, For example. Co-Star's co hiring. We, Co-Star's we hiring. The other thing. Dairy so, Central. So, so I, you know, there could be a pivot from west to east in, in that, that kind of way. But, yeah, it's, um, it's an interesting phenomenon, but... Um, I, I'm not dialed too much into the eviction side of the house. We we work with that quite regularly on the Planning District Commission, and you know that's something for Suzanne Real with Ally to come in to talk about. And there's a couple of folks. Matter of fact, um, uh, a uh, on his day job, um, Dave Nor Norris would be able to help on the PHA. But you know we're trying to work him in to talk a little bit about his. Campaign. Love here. Dave Norris running for delegate. Dave Norris, uh, yeah. appreciate you uh, reaching out, my friend. The redheaded LeBron James. You're a big. Uh, you're well liked on this program. LeBron as James. Are you, he kind of reminds Brown. me more of. Of okay, who was this, the Celtic star? Bill Walton. Larry Bird. Larry Bird. Larry. Oh, okay. He's Larry more Bird. of a Larry Bird kind of kind of kind of guy. Okay, Marvin Moss of Fluvanna County is catching some heat in the comment section, literally as we speak. Marvin Moss. Yeah, that's a name I haven't heard forever. Can you offer a little perspective on who Marvin Moss is? Oh God, he's catching a little heat right now. I have not, I have not spoken or heard of Marvin Moss. Oh my God, ten or twelve years. He used to be the uh, chair of Fluvanna County. Is that the same Marvin Moss? Former member of the Fluvanna County Board of Supervisors. That's exactly it's the same one. Speaking of which, let's pivot a little bit. Uh, a little respect to the Cobb family. Cecil Cobb passed away yesterday. Cecil Cobb, I um, can't remember, was either before Marvin or after Marvin, uh, was the chair of Fulvana County. Uh, real upstanding, great guy. Knew him very well. So Lifelong family friend, my dad's best friend, hunting partner. Just uh, you know, Class A guy. You know, great builder, race cars. Guy's just a fantastic, fantastic human being. So big... Big condolences to his family, friends, everybody involved. Yeah, it's an outstanding individual. So, what is Marvin getting, getting picked uh, apart? Maybe we should be reading. Got uh, it. Yeah, yeah. That that's a name I haven't heard in forever. I Marvin. Just, I, I kind of kept it a little. Uh, Got it. Yeah, a little safe. Safe. This is a safe space. A little safe. For safe the commentary. Space. <laughs> um, not nice things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we don't we don't point fingers. It's, it's tough when you're elected official, man. Yeah. I mean, especially at the local level. Yeah, half he, the people are going to hate you. The other half aren't even going to care about you. Yeah, but he's been out of the game for what? 
decade. I mean, yeah. oh God, uh, got to be at least 10, 15 years. Uh, this has come on the feed. Uh, this is from James. Jerry, Jerry, please ask Scott Morris about Lake Monticello. I know he grew up in that area as well. You guys routinely talk about the lake, and on Monday's show, you talked about the meager levels of inventory. Scott, we had, what was Lee Elberson's number? It was a quarter of a percent of Lake Monticello is currently active on the market. Well, what is Can it? you believe that Marine can figure that all out? Well, yeah, well, we've been talking about this for, uh, for three years. Um, as soon as everything, uh, you know, went crazy, uh, we were like, what, four or five non-new construction units active with four or five by Liberty Homes available, 4,000 units, 10 active now would be my guess if that's the numbers that uh, we're talking about. While you're talking, I'm going to go find that number for you. And, Not uh, you know, yes, well, you, so you go, you know, the, it's, it's, there's, it's a very interesting place as far as how it's evolved. Um, you've got uh, the original homes that uh, were ranchers that have slowly become uh, rentals, investment properties that are, are, are scattered throughout the lake. Um, and then you've got some of the newer, nicer areas that have, you know, Depending on where you are, that are single family. It's 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 the hu it's the largest uh, condensed pocket of homes in Fluvanna County. It's got to be. It's the largest neighborhood in Central Virginia. There you go. Yeah. Ten, ten on ten. There you go. There's good good guess, Scotty Mo. Uh, ten 4, of four thousand three hundred. Yeah, and 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 ten homes on the market. So um, that you know always kind of. But you got to look at what's going to create turnover there. Um, uh, you know, it's a it's a bedroom community for Albemarle and somewhat Richmond. I'm sure there's some people who hit 15 to 64, um, depending on what they do or you know where they they go. And uh, the people, you know, it's it's a it's it's been your afford your nice affordable gated community to to be in 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 the area. So 10, the medium days on mar market is 38. Um, the average is 55. There's a couple of homes that are still on the market in triple digits, uh, 110, 177. Uh, pretty much the last three that came on the market are under six at the moment. What are the triple digit price points? Do you have that? Yeah, yeah. I'm looking right at it. 799, 6, 629, 80. Uh, there's 84 days on market is 595. 68 days on market is. 339 those upper numbers are all the waterfronts yeah if you told me at any point in my life and right now i mean and and, and good, congratulations to those people there's that I, they I could grow, get that growing up in fluvanna yeah i'm one i don't want to live in the lake and or any gated community but two to pay eight hundred thousand dollars to live in lake monticello is like the craziest thing yeah, I've ever uh, in my life uh, yeah. I, I, I i'm i'm sorry i probably shouldn't say that doing what i do for a living but it's just that's not for if location matters it's not where i want to be what's well, the top what's the highest price point ever sold at lake monticello 7.99 no highest price point ever ever oh i i any I'm, million I'm plus at Lake Monticello? I'm sure, I'm sure there's a million somewhere in there. I'd have to go ahead and, and take another another blush blush at it. Um, but usually you don't go much over the 800 price range on that end of it. And the proof of that is, again, we don't want to, you know, cherry pick or, or talk about specifics on a on a listing. But um, this one I happen to be looking at that's now 800 started at 865. Um on it so you know I, I just think again it's it's always the it's these six things right in the first four matter which is location which is look that's a great location price is probably too high i'm looking at the pictures right now the features or conditions are in really great shape so that means they're just overpriced and the price needs to get adjusted accordingly and then it'll sell but 177 days on market's pretty pretty strong um comments coming in fast and furious right here vanessa parkhill every state and local government is going to take their pound of flesh to cover their services i have a family member in pennsylvania whose home values are one quarter to one third of the value of my home in almoro and they pay at least five times what i do in real estate tax but they don't pay personal property taxes the more citizens ask the government to do for them the more government is going to take from our pockets I'll give her some props on that. I know Scott Morris is going to give her some props on that right there. Well, budgets usually don't go backwards. Nelson County did, right? Nelson they, County. And I don't know uh, about this year. Budget but, neutral. Well, we're going to find out on Friday if we're going to be able to uh, hold a budget neutral for 2020, 
2023, I guess that would be, 2023, 2024. More interesting on the Fulvano Lake Monticello thing, there are 14 homes in the pending mark, right? So that these are homes that went on the contract. Medium days on market was 34, average is 41. So we're gonna start watching these average and medium dates get a little bit closer on that end of it. And they're ranging from, uh, the, so we, it hasn't closed yet, so you don't really know what the sale price is going to be. But on the list side of the price, they're ranging from 269 So there's only two homes that are currently pending under 300000 going all the way up to, hold on a second. No, I spoke I spoke um, incorrectly. Let me adjust the price. Kevin here. Yancey says, Keith, there was a $1 million sale in Light Monticello in 2008. It was waterfront, yeah. and it ended up being an absolute teardown. I think I remember that home. So you're saying you're saying you're saying to me someone I'm sorry. bought a house at Lake Monticello for over a million dollars. Tore it down. Tore it down. Built a new and house. And built a new house. Yeah. You you'll start you'll start seeing a lot of that at Lake Monticello. Scott, you got you know what? Why don't, I not, why don't I not ask Scott his thoughts on that one? I'm not going to ask Scott his thoughts on that one. I'll go to Keith Smith on no, that look, one. You know, look if. Some, that's what somebody I wants to do. They really got well the cash to do it. Hey, I, that's right. I just wouldn't think Last that, time that I checked, we lived in the United States of America. Good luck. Hey, so maybe they wanted the waterfront so there's it only, in Virginia. i got to correct myself because uh, I had the wrong setting on it. There's only four homes that are currently pending under th under three hundred thousand dollars. I a, just go I just wouldn't think that's the neighborhood. Sorry, I'm going to go have lunch with Tommy D. You, Ovation Builders, fan, the high end renovation company in Charlottesville. They do amazing, amazing, amazing work. Um, t uh, who not too long ago did a half a million dollar renovation to a home in uh, Farmington. Went back the next year uh, to do some work on the same 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 little area, neighborhood road, uh, and talked to the owner. Said, "Hey." don't recognize the house down there. He goes, yeah, right after you guys finished, they just decided they, they were going to tear the whole thing down, do a whole, yeah. So I, people do this. I just wouldn't think. Did you work that, on that house? I, I would. <laughs> okay, just you know, check it. Just I, check it. <laughs> I just wouldn't think that. Because that would make sense. I just then. wouldn't think that the lake is the, you know, I just, yeah. you know, I don't know. Maybe they wanted the water view. Hard to get a water view in Central Virginia. You know. I, I, Where I, else would you go for I, a water I, view in Central Virginia? If I had the, if I had the cash, I'd live on the water. Well, where would you have a water view in Central Virginia? Maybe you can in Milton Village in Keswick get a little well, water view it's of the more than a, It's more than a water view, right? You they water got the ski, dock. You water ski, you fish. You got the dock. You know, yeah. It's a pretty large lake. I mean, lake. you know, Lake Anna. Um, it, would we well, call The one that, that you glow at, is that one? That lake one? Anna, a little further drive. Lake Anna is a little, a little further drive, yes. So, And those price points are higher. They are. Um, Depends on the section. Uh, generally higher than the lake. They are. Yes, I, w I personally would lean towards, uh, I would find something river related as far as if that's, so, if I wanted to look at something nice, Rivanna river? that's what I, w that's what I w would want to do. you like the river. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know. Would my boat work I, in the river? I, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't want to see. Does your I, boat work? I don't want to come out and there be people, let's, let's you, know, personal, you know, you know, <laughs> fishing, um, you know, personal. from, from a boat into my dock and, you know, I, I, okay. I don't know. I don't know. So, so uh, Cully Baggett, the developer and builder, says Lake Anna is very up and coming, gentlemen. So people are driving out that way. That's because it's making sense. So of the 14 at Lake Monticello, um, interesting jump. So we go from we go from 250 to the 399.9 to 400, and the last two jump from 400 to seven. 785. So we've got two, give him a fist pump over there. We've got two, um, two sales that are pending in the seven, but there's this huge jump between three. It's almost double, just to round numbers a little bit, 400 to 800 on that end of it. But 12 of them are between 400 and 250. Um, Cully, appreciate that comment. And the Potomac River is very different than the Rivanna River for those who are talking about the Potomac River. I would say those are not comps. Have you ever floated down the Ravana River and not had to carry your... Yeah, I mean, I grew up right where, uh, you know, in, I, know. I grew up in Columbia where the Ravana and the James come together. Um, the Ravana, well, the Ravana, yeah, is much more shallow um, than the James. The James um, is a good thing to float down. Yes. What's the, what's the, what's the, what's the name of the firm in... Um, James River Runners? In Scottsville. In Scottsville? Yeah, James River. There's two of them, actually. 
There are. There's, there's James, two floating. Uh, there's James River Runners and the other one. Well, we won't we'll talk about the other one. We'll talk about the James River <laughs> because that is uh, Coach Rateau's uh, family that owns that, right? Um, James River Reeling and Rafting. Yeah. And James a, yeah, River Runners. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I had to do a quick Google search over there. Um, the mayor Has anybody got to use the yellow card, by the way? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> The mayor of McIntyre says over $400,000 home on Lions Court in Charlottesville City. Yeah. The folks purchased it, raised the home, yeah. rebuilt it from scratch. Yeah. I would love to know what their assessment is. You buy a home in Charlottesville City on Lions Court for, for more than $400,000. You tear it completely down. But that's what and people, you build it. You know, it's, if that's that's what, happening in Fifeville, too. Yeah, you know, so... so that's if, a, definition of gentrification for that neighborhood absolutely if we can't get more inventory you're going to see more of this you know the 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 money for lack of a better term isn't going away it's come it's still coming well this is a perfect question to the next one from laura how much of your business is out of town buyers coming to charlottesville or central virginia scott and keith more um more now more oh yeah well i'm starting to see more now uh, and there's a lot there's a lot more of people coming into the area there's a lot of growth happening with the university with NGIC and dia um and uh i don't know if it's coincidence but uh that's you know see a lot of that i also um have a group that i work with uh in in the chesapeake area and seeing a lot of uh nurses from New York who are trying to yeah. come down uh, into that area as well. So. I actually made a note earlier about travel nurses and that as a business model and you're starting to see the, the Airbnb model go away a little bit in the travel nursing because they usually have three to six month contracts on that end of it. And a little you, easier to manage. Well, no, it's a workaround on some of the HOA requirements it depends on the HOA you can uh, you can that is now not considered short-term rental certain you got to dig into the HOA documents on that end of it but some of them you know if you're over three months or six months it's not quote unquote short term on, on that end of it our our business as far as uh, folks relocating here has always kind of been a 60 40 split. I can tell you when Scott was doing all that wonderful work for me and we were building all these wonderful houses together, I would tell you 100% of the business was folks relocating out. There's a, there's a buyer pro pool, um, and, and I've got, tomorrow I got a meeting with custom, two custom builders, one of them you know. Um, on, I heard about that. Meeting. On buyers that are um, relocate, they're, they, they're UVA grads, they've retired, and the reload, they want to come back. That's a huge buyer pool. And there's property that they have sold, done very well. Cash is what we're working with. And, uh, you know, they're okay with spending money. What's left on the corner for a UVA grad retired to come back? Is the Virginian still there? Yeah, Andy McClure owns it. Okay. Our client. All right. In front of the program. You're talking about when, like, they were here in the 70s, that kind of thing? Or, you know, even if you go back to the... I think you've got, uh, you got the Biltmore. Yeah. you got uh, Buddhist, which is now kind of rebranded, Crozet Pizza, that was there. Mm -hmm. That was there when I was in school yes. in 2000. Coupe de Ville's, um, although, well, I shouldn't say what I was about to say. Say Coupe's, Buddhist, the Biltmore, the Virginia. I knew this was a good topic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Boylan Heights, when you were there, when we were Orbitz. there, was Orbit. Yeah, it was Orbit. Orbit may or may not have seen uh, not the best version of Jerry. Um, we'll leave it at that over there. Um, St. Martin's is long gone. We have I've got a way with more there. The, oh, yeah, Orbit was yeah, the yeah. Wild West. That's where yeah. I met your brother-in-law, James Watson. Yeah. And Orbit just, was the Wild West. And I just, you know, James may or may not have pictures. At some, I'm keeping them in my the back pocket for the proper blackmail <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> It was the Wild West, and we will leave it at that. Uh, gentlemen, some closing thoughts. Scotty Moe, the show is yours. 
Um, I did want to say, uh, take the time to, to bring up uh, Cecil Cobb's mm -hmm. passing. Uh, so anybody in Fluvanna uh, connected to uh, him or the family or his business uh, or any of the things that he did, just an outstanding human being who's no longer with us. Um, and then outside of that, for borrowers, buyers, agents, everything else, just keep doing what you're doing. Um, we're what's continuing to be the trusted advisors to help people make the decisions that they need to make to move on with their lives. Well said, Scott. So on the, Cecil, I like it. on the Cecil Cobb thing, I'm, I'm going to reach out to Moselle Booker after the show today and see if I can get some. Pretty sure that was Lee Elberson who just drove uh, by. Was it really Every Lee? Every time he goes by the studio, <laughs> he honks the horn from his Jeep. I and think. I was saying Was something. that you, Lee Elberson? I was saying something profoundly. Thank go, you. go ahead, Keith. I apologize. Finish your No, thing. no. The beep and you and that. I just lost it. But, <laughs> you know, as far as um, Cecil uh, Cobb goes, uh, I'll, I'll, Scott, I'll keep you looped in on on that um, and I'm just flattered and and thankful and speechless about this um, second award and um, thank you for everybody who gave me congratulations um, I'm, I'm glad to be able to sit here and do this and it just means the world to me to be recognized like that so thank you real talk with Keith Smith online at realtalkwithkeithsmith.com guys Scott Morris um, the owner of Ross Mortgage here he is the uh, branch manager in what, Virginia, Pennsylvania, and North Carolina, is that accurate? Correct. Branch manager, Virginia, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania. You need a loan, Scotty Moe. Keith Smith, 38 years, we got 38? Uh, 87, whatever that math works out to. Okay, okay. 80, 87, 88, well, somebody does the math. You're the numbers guy, do the math. 35, 36 years yeah. over there. Over three decades, let's call, call it, it that. Let's call it a fair amount of time. Let's call it over three decades. How about a fair amount of time? Let's call it three decades. You've got a show to do, we got to go. I, I'm trying. Yeah. Trusted advisor over here, Keith Smith. <laughs> Judah Wickhauer keeps us on air. This show is about education, enlightenment, and entertainment. We hope you enjoyed as much as us. The I Love Siebel show is up in 45 minutes. Take care, everybody. Hold on, gentlemen. Looking forward to Friday. It's going to be fun with Jesse. Oh, of course. Jesse's always fun. Good job, Jesse. Nobody raised the yellow card.